Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to this, uh, I think is my second Sunday morning being on the air with you, praise God. And uh, I'm glad to have all of you out there, uh, praise God. I'm going to tag some friends, uh, praise God. So you forgive me here for a moment while I praise the Lord. Most of the folks are people that come to the little church, but uh, not all of them, praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. All right. I think that's uh, pretty much all of them. Well, praise God. Ashley, God bless you. Praise the Lord. And Joe, God bless you. Joe and Peggy both are watching right now. Praise God. I'm glad you're out there. Praise the Lord. It's good to be with you on this Sunday morning. Praise God. I'm glad to, that God uh, kept us all through the night and let us live to see a... Uh, <laughs> Ashley, good morning to you all, too. Uh, all the clan is there, she said. Praise God. Well, um, uh, I'm glad that God kept us through the night and uh, let us see, live to see another day, but also let us live to see. Thank you, Sue. God bless you. And let us live, let it, he let us live to see another start of a new week. Praise God. I try to think about that on Sundays when I first wake up. I try to I thank the Lord every day when I get up, I wake up. I thank you, Lord, for another day and for keeping me through the night. God bless you, Sue. Praise God. Carla, God bless you. Glad you're uh, listening this morning. I know you probably got church, uh, church, another service maybe to listen to, but praise God. Now, Christian, God bless you. Uh, I hope she's. I hope she's here. I hope you're telling me. I don't know if she's on yet, or you just tagged her. Oh, there she is. Praise God. Kirsten, God bless you. Praise God. Good to have you out there today with Jonas watching. Aaron Timberlake's watching. God bless you, Eric. Thanks for coming back a second time. Praise the Lord. I guess uh, a glutton for punishment, maybe. Praise God. Anyway, I'm just kidding, Aaron. Glad to have you uh, uh, out there listening. Praise the Lord. And I was telling you that when I wake up every morning, usually the very first thing or right just about the first thing that comes to my mind is thanking the Lord for the for keeping me through the night, let me live to see another day. And then I try to remember to do that uh, during the, uh, the, the, on Sundays, I thank you for letting us live to see, let me live to see another start of a new week. Praise God. God bless all of you. Praise God. Jonah, God, praise the Lord. I'm glad you're listening this morning, watching this morning. Well, uh, I'll go ahead and, Get started in my message. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Aaron, God bless you all. Praise the Lord. But I want to read a scripture to you this morning from uh, uh, the fourth chapter of uh, Hebrews and the 12th verse. Talking about the word of God. Praise God. And before we get into it, can we all... Just Can I just say a real quick prayer, Lord? I do come to you with all those that are grieving for you to take over this time. Let it be your time from start to end, Lord. And when it's all said and done, that your will will have been done, Father. That your will will have been done. Not man's, not the enemy's, but your will be done from start to finish. And I'm going to give you the broadcast, give you this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want to read a scripture, just one scripture from Hebrews um, chapter 4, verse 12. It says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. You know, in the sixth chapter of Ephesians, the 17th verse, it talks about taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praise God. So the Word of God is called a sword. 
uh, a two-edged sword, by the way. Praise God. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, e a piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Just literally is telling us in that verse that the word of God uh, penetrates all the way down to the deepest part of us. Praise God. Even talking about to the marrow and the joints and the marrow in the bones even it goes to the deepest part of us and uh thank god i'm glad it does because if it wasn't for that word the word of god being that strong the conviction on people would not be strong but when you give out the word of god to people uh and you uh, are led of the holy spirit as you give it out it's going to do something to their heart it's going to penetrate their heart in some way praise god and i just want to share with you a little bit this morning about the importance of God's Word in our lives as Christians and what the Word of God does for us. I hope that you'll listen real close today for the time that I'm on um, and uh, maybe make a note of some, uh, uh, some scriptures I give you. But uh, today I want to talk to you about the importance of God's Word in our lives as Christians. How important is the Word of God to us as Christians? And uh, what what the Word of God does for us, praise God. This is my fourth service. Uh, thank you, but God bless you. Glad you're here. Praise God. God bless you today. This is the fourth service that I've had on Facebook. My first service was uh, the 16th of this month on a Thursday night. And starting with that ser that service and that uh, sermon, that message, all the way up to through last Thursday night, I, I was talking about in those three messages about having victory over fear. And I've continued to talk, and I continue to talk about having faith, overcoming what we're facing, going on and how we can be victorious over trials and tribulations praise god now it's the word of god these things are important to me because god's word lets me know that i can and you can as christians be victorious in our walk with god let me tell you something about jesus i want to tell you first of all that Jesus is my example. He's the one I look to as being the one that uh, uh, I need to follow and follow his example, praise God. And in the life of Jesus when he was here, 33 and a half years he was here, not one time, not once, do we have any record from the word of God and that's what we have to go by. We can't go by the writings of other people that lived back then because we don't know if it was true or not. And we can't go by uh, what we feel. We have to go by God's Word. And it, in the Word of God, it lets us know a place, one place in the Word of God that Jesus ever suffered defeat at the hands of the enemy. Never. If you can find a place in the Word of God where Satan defeated Jesus while he was here, I wish I want you to make a note and show me where it is. Send it to me. Not one time in the life of Christ and his ministry was he ever defeated by the enemy. But we have record in the Word of God that tells us there was times the enemy came against him to try to literally destroy the plan of God, to stop the plan of God. Because if he had been successful in the life of Christ ever, then the plan of God would have been, would have been defeated. If he could have ever gotten Jesus to sin, and he tried, if he would, had ever been able to, then the plan of God would have been authoritative and would have been stopped and our salvation couldn't have been bought 
because it took a perfect sacrifice and Jesus had to be perfect, and he was. The Bible said he was tempted but never sinned. And in all the time that uh, Satan tried to stop him, never once was he defeated. But he's my example that I look to. And because Christ was never defeated, it is my personal belief, this is what I have believed for a long time, that God does, mean, does not mean for us to be defeated, ever, ever. Jesus is our example. And he never was defeated by the enemy. And, um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, folks. And God doesn't intend or mean for us to be defeated, ever. Not ever, praise God. You say, well, we are. Yes, we are. That's that's the truth. We are. But that's not God's fault. Praise God. That's not God's fault. That's ours. And so Jesus did what he had to do to walk in the Spirit constantly. And if we did, if we did what we needed to do in our lives to walk in the spirit, we'd never, we never uh, f uh, fulfill the lust of the flesh. We we would we wouldn't have a problem with sin. Praise God. And I, and all the times I've been on so far, I've talked about uh, not having fear. That God doesn't want us to have fear. It's not his it's, fear is a spirit. The Bible says in First Timothy one seven. It's a it's a spirit it's a spirit of the enemy it's a demonic spirit it is something that tries to uh to do things opposite of what god's word wants us to do instead of having faith fear wants to instill doubt in us and make us uh, feel like that um, things is going to happen or <coughs> excuse me folks and uh, so uh, not of god enemy and you can have victory over fear uh you and i both can my victory comes when i commit my life to the lord surrender to whatever's going on in my life and turn it over to god and say lord now this is your i'm giving it to you lord i'm giving you this problem and surrender it to him and sometimes we face some pretty severe problems but there's not one problem that we face that we can't surrender to the lord and give to him if we will he tells us to cast our care upon him, for he careth for us. Praise God. But Patsy, God bless you, is watching prayers for Jimmy Smallwood. Yes, we're going to be praying at the end of the broadcast for any request. Okay, and I'll try to remember that one. Praise God. The Bible tells us God walk, wants us to walk in victory. You read in 1 John chapter 5, where it says our faith in God and his word is what helps us to overcome the world. Our faith will help us to overcome. And by the word, it's talking about everything that comes against us in the world. Praise God. The answer to every problem we will ever face is found in God's word. Now, you need to hear that because I know that already. I've known it for years. But knowing that makes me immediately, when it comes to a time of trials and troubles that I start, I'm going through or problems or whatever I'm facing, but I know immediately it comes to me, I know that every the answer to every problem we'll ever face in life is found in God's Word. It's found in God, and it's found in God's Word. I think of it like this. God doesn't have the answer he is the answer this is for me this is the way i believe a lot of things i'll share with you it's just my personal belief according to what i believe what the word of god teaches god just doesn't have the answer or is he have the answer he is the answer if you are saved you have dwelling in you the answer to every situation or trial you'll ever face. I'm saved today because of what Jesus did on the cross. Praise God. 
Jimmy, God bless you. Uh, I know you're probably home, and I'm so glad you, you made it through that. Been praying for you for a good while about your heart. Praise God. I don't know how to do that, Jeff. I don't know about all this. Jeff, Jeff Proctor's watching. Praise God. If you are saved, Joe Barry, God bless you. If you are saved, you have dwelling inside of you the answer to every problem you will ever have. Every right. in right. life. God gave Adam dominion and authority over all his creation. He even let him name. I don't know what's going on there, folks. Verse 20. Praise God. I don't know if you're hearing it, but I'm hearing a noise. He Praise to see God. Adam and Eve I don't know how to stop that. And sinned against God by eating the fruit of the only tree in the garden. Okay, okay, sorry about that. I hope I didn't hurt you there, Jeff, but I was hearing myself in the background. Uh, it was like a two or three second delay in what I was saying coming in. I, I couldn't, I can't, uh, sorry about that, Jeff, if that done anything to you, to your, your reception, praise God. I want to say that again. If you are saved, you have dwelling in you the answer to every situation or trial you'll ever face. Whether it be spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, financial, or any other kind of problem. God is your answer. And the answer is found in God's word. Praise God. How important is God's word for us? Remember, I come on, I said, what I want to talk to you today about is the importance of God's word in our lives as Christians, what the word of God does for us. How important is God's word to us? Well, here's the main thing it does for us. Seriously. Praise God. It's what keeps us alive. Spiritually. Now, I know a lot of people don't believe that. They think that once they're saved uh, and born again, that uh, nothing can ever happen to change that. Well, I, I don't agree with that. I believe that once we're saved, we, we are to live the life of following the Lord Jesus Christ. We just can't get saved and go out and start living any way we want to and and, uh, and just get back in sin again. I remember w witnessing to a young lady, and uh, she was living a pretty wild life. She she was going out and partying and drinking and doing things. And and uh, I talked to her about the Lord, and she said this to me. Here's what she said. She said, "Oh, I'm all right." She said, "I was saved when I was 11 years old." And I'm okay. She said, if I die, I'm going to heaven. And she was living an ungodly life. She was drinking, running around, having affairs with people. But yet she claimed to be a Christian. But I want to tell you something. That's contrary to the word of God. There's so many scriptures that tells us that's not the way we're supposed to live our lives once we're saved. Praise God. How important is the word of God to us? It is so important. It's what keeps us alive spiritually. It, it feeds our spirit, keeps our spirit man alive. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, chapter 4, verse 4, when Satan tempted him after he came out of the wilderness being fasting 40 days and nights and he was hungry, the Bible says, Jesus, I mean, Satan tempted him to turn some stones into bread. He said, if thou be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And it, Jesus said to him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 
if you watch these broadcasts very much, you're going to find out that I'm a person that literally believes the word is, means what it said, literally means what it says. Had a wonderful Baptist minister tell me one time, spirit field minister, love the Lord. He said, Brother Warren, if you want to, under, here's the easiest way to understand the word of God. And uh, he had, he was a professor. He, I mean, he was a pastor, but he, he held a class or uh, a, a evangelical tabernacle college in Louisville, seemingly God college. And he, so I wanted to go and be in his class. And, and I was there and I was walking out with him one night and I talked to him and, and he said, I asked him about the word. He said, if you want to understand the word, he said, just accept it at what it says. That's the easiest way. He said, that's it. That's the way I do it, Brother Warren. He said, if it says it, I believe it, period. Now, we do know there are some places in the Word of God that are, are not literal. What kind of places you talk about, Brother Warren? Well, it's easy for me, but uh, I don't have a problem with it. I, God lets me discern when things is not literal and when things are. For the vast majority, 99% of the Word of God is literal, but there are places that aren't. For instance... The places that talks about God hiding us under his wings, his wing, wings. I don't believe that God has wings. I don't believe God has wings. I believe he's referring to taking us under his arm. As a hen would under her wing, he takes us under his arm and he hides us and he protects us. And I believe that. Praise God. But most of the word is of the word of God is literal. And when Jesus was talking to Satan and rebuking him, resisting the temptation that he came, that we get several things out of this verse, folks. I don't know how far I'm going to get in my message, but the things I want to share with you, if you're listening, if you're listening, is important. A lot of you are having problems. A lot of you are going through trials. Some of you need to have victory over things in your life. Well, you can find it in God and in his word, okay? Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He was quote, quoting Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, when he said that to Satan. Man shall not live by bread alone. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Notice what Jesus used to overcome Satan's temptation. One of the reasons why the word of God is so important to us. I'll talk about that in a moment, Lord. Well, in a few minutes, if I get time, if I can get to it before I go off. Praise God. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Do you see what he's saying here? First of all, Jesus used the word to, re, to, re, uh, to resist Satan's temptation. And we can use the word of God to resist Satan tempta Satan's temptations. Just like Jesus did. Remember I told you he's my example. He's what I look to. He's the one I look to. To show me how to live the Christian life, what I should do and not do. And he's telling us you can't just live by physical bread or physical food. If we could, we'd be. We, there's a lot of us that, like me that would be really strong spiritually because if that it was related to uh, the the food I ate, uh, I ate a lot of food, and uh, and but I do believe in fasting too, folks. I fast regular. I've been doing it for years. I encourage you to do at least one day a week. Praise God. Let the Lord lead you. But he said, but he, the man lives by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, here, there's several things we get out of this verse, but look at this last part. Where does the word of God come from? Boy. Boy, I've had people say, you're wrong, Brother Warren. I mean, they they literally do not believe that the, the Bible is the word of God. 
They don't believe that it came from his mouth. <laughs> but Jesus said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. God spoke this word, folks. It came from God. Jesus is referring to God's word here as being food for our spiritual man. The word of God is food for our spiritual man. As a Christian, you are composed of body, soul, and spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. First Thessalonians 5, 23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Now, Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonians. Uh, like a Thessalonians and and the very God of peace he says sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ God bless you Kathy God bless you this morning I thought you might be listening to your brother um, he's, he's supposed to be bringing a good message this morning on the authority of the believer. Praise God. Praise God. Kathy, God bless you. Thanks for listening. I know you might not be able to stay with me long, but thanks for being there. Praise God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, Paul's writing to the church at Thessalonica. And he says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. God bless you, Don. Glad to have you. I can't hit that bring them on camera because uh, it does something to my, uh, it does something to, on my end, or when I speak about three seconds later, I hear myself like an echo. And I'm sorry, Levi, Brother Donald, uh, Brother Don, I can't bring them up on camera. Sorry about that. Praise God. And he says, he said, and the very God of peace, this is First Thessalonians 5, 23, sanctify you holy, and, and I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body. Now notice what he, notice what he attributes to us. God bless you, Charles. He said, I pray that God will, in relation to your to you, your, well, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. That's that's right. Said First Thessalonians five twenty three. As a Christian, you are made up of three parts: body, soul, and spirit. Notice, I said, as a Christian. Now, I didn't mean to get into this, but uh, to make it easy, so some of you are saying, well, we're is saved or not saved, we're body, soul, spirit. No, and that's not the case. When we're born into this world physically, a baby's born, has a body, soul, and spirit. It's an innocent little child that doesn't know sin. And it has... It's the little body, soul, and spirit is intact. What we're born with. But as he gets older and gets to the place that it knows the difference between right and wrong and it chooses to so wrong, the Bible calls that sin. And I'll read to you in a moment here. Kills the spirit. It kills the spirit of man. And listen to this now. As a Christian, you're made up of three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. <coughs> As lost people, they are made up of two parts. Body and soul. Listen to this. I just read a scripture from First, from first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, 
where Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica, to the Thessalonians, to the church, to the believer. Understand this is not to everybody. This is to the believer what he's saying. This is not to the lost. He's writing to the church. Well, a lot of things we don't think about in the and when we read the epistles of Paul, he starts almost almost every one of them off by saying he's writing to the believer, to the church, to those who are saved, to those who are Christians, not to the lost. The majority of God's word is to the Christian, not to the lost. There are some things in the word of God that are for the lost, people who are lost. Thank God for it. When it talks about us needing Praise God. Sammy, God bless you. And Kathy, God bless you. Kathy, I can't do that. I wish I could, but I tried it when Jeff come up. And and when I did that, it was, all I had was a lot of, like, feedback to me. I, I'd hear myself, what I was saying about three seconds afterwards, and it was loud. So I, I couldn't do it, Kathy. I'm sorry. But I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad Sam's watching. God bless you, Sam. Now, when Paul wrote the epistles, with, uh, just the small books of the New Testament and Paul, that Paul wrote called the epistles, he, he wrote to the, he was writing to Christians. Now, he wrote 1st and 2nd Corinthians to the church, and that's not small books. Those are large books. But he wrote. Uh, when he, the books he wrote, he wrote to the Christian, to the churches, to the people. Now Sam says he's looking for a lost horse. Now he had to found. The, by the way, folks, he he, he contacted us last week and wanted to want to pray about a, <coughs> uh, a dog that was lost, and he found that dog the next day. Praise God! And it was in bad shape. It it needed help because it had just wore itself out and was lodged in a place that if God, if he hadn't, if God hadn't led him to it, he would, the dog would have died. He found, but now he's got a lost horse. So I believe Sam will be praying about that when the broadcast is, <coughs> excuse me, at the end of the broadcast, if you don't mind. Praise God. The Bible tells us that when we're born, born, we're born with a body, soul, and spirit. But when we get to the place we know what sin is and, and what's right and wrong, and we choose the wrong sin, sin destroys the spirit. It kills the spirit, which cost us our relationship with God because God is spirit. And those who know God personally must also be spirit. To have a, for us to have a relationship with God, we must be spirit spiritual and when our spirit is dead that stops us from being able to have a relationship with god and what happens we have to come to the lord get saved when we get saved the holy spirit comes in us raises our spirit that was dead because of sin back to life that's the new birth that's the second birth praise god and when that happens now we have a relationship with god we are now spiritual beings again Praise God. Okay. Okay. As lost people, though, they only have two parts of their being alive. I've said this many times. Lost people are only two-thirds alive. Their body's alive, their soul's alive, but their spirit is dead. And here's what Jesus said about that. In Matthew 10, 28, Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, meaning God, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Notice he does not mention the spirit. Because the lost people that's going to hell, the ones that's going to hell, he's talking about here, they are spiritually dead. Their spirit is not alive. He said their body and soul is going to go to hell, but he doesn't mention the spirit because it's dead. But notice what back again, what Paul said to the, church, uh, to the Thessalonians that were Christians writing to the church, the believers. <coughs> 
he said, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so you see, the saved are alive completely, body, soul, and spirit. The lost are only alive in their body and soul, and that's the part will, that will go to hell if they die in that condition. Jesus didn't refer to the lost as having a spirit, having a spirit, because it is dead because of sin. Sin kills the spirit of man. James one, fifteen tells us, when lust. Notice what it says. Then when lust hath conceived, this is James chapter one verse fifteen. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished bringeth forth death. Now just think about it. When a person sins, everybody sins for the first time or sinning for a while, they don't die physically, not normally. That, that, that normally is not the case. But they do die in some way. How do they die? They die spiritually. He said, when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Praise God. We need God's word in us to feed our spiritual man. We need God's word in us. That's what I was starting off by saying. What, what, why, how is the word of God important to us? When I started off, I said the, the importance of God's word in our lives is Christian. Excuse me, folks. We need the work. The most important thing about God's word is it's food for us. It's what keeps us alive spiritually. And you say, well, Jesus keeps us alive. Yes, he does. But you've got to remember, folks, put it together. The Bible says that Jesus is the word of God. And the word of God. In Christ, is when he speaks, he speaks. He is the word of God. The Bible tells us that in, in John chapter 1 and in 1 John chapter 5, that Jesus is the word of God. So when you have the word of God, uh, you're getting the word of God in you. Well, later I'll tell you <coughs> how that relates to your relationship with God. We need God's word in us to feed our spiritual man. Job said, in Job, the 23rd chapter in verse 12, I just finished reading that book. Thank you, Kathy. Job said, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips, talking about the commandment God gave him, commandment, the commandment, commandment God gave him. He said, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have, have esteemed the words of his mouth more than, than my necessary food. Boy, esteem means considered of more importance. I consider his word of more importance to me than my necessary food. It's necessary to have physical food to survive physically. But he said, the word of God, the commandment of God, I esteem much more important, more important than I do physical, regular physical food. Job calls God's word food and says it's more important than his physical food. Oh, that we as Christians thought the same way. Oh, we'd have a bunch of powerhouses running around. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2 says, First Peter 2 chapter 2 verse 2, as a newborn babe, as newborn babes, notice that this is a person that's been born again. And as and it's when he's first starting out as a Christian, he says, as newborn babes, 1 Peter 2, 2, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. See, the word of God is food to us. For new Christians, they need the milk of the word. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If the Lord wills, and I don't forget it. At the end of the broadcast, I want to pray for people 
who want a greater desire for the Word of God. And I'm going to agree with them if I remember to. I'm going to agree with them in prayer for, their, for them. And I want them to agree in prayer for me because I want a greater desire than I've ever had for God's Word. And I'm going to pray the same for you, praise God. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk, milk feeds a baby, a baby that doesn't have its mother's milk. Now, this is back in the day when Christ was in the Word of God. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. The uh, New Testament, we have mothers don't, didn't they? They just had uh, breast milk. And as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, they have to have that milk to survive. And we as Christians have to have the milk of the word to survive, that you may grow thereby. But once you get to a certain place, then the Bible says we're to go from the milk to the meat. In other words, when a child, just like when a child is physically born, milk until a certain time, then it starts eating whole food and finally eats meat one time later in its life as it grows, gets older. So there's the milk of the word, which tells us the word of God is food to us. And in second, I mean, I'm sorry, in first Corinthians chapter three, verse two, first Corinthians chapter three, verse two, Paul said to the Corinthian church, writing to the church, I have fed, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet are ye, neither yet now are ye able. He was saying, I started off giving you the milk of God's word, and I wanted you to, I was hoping you'd mature and grow to the place that I could give you the meat of God's word, but still, you're still at the place where you can't, you can't uh, take anything but the milk, which means they were not maturing as Christians. And you read first and second Corinthians, you see they had a lot of problems. A lot of fleshly problems. It's what their problems was come from the flesh. Praise God. God's word. God's word spoken of as milk is spoken of as milk and meat. Milk for the new Christians, meat for the more mature Christians. The word of God is absolutely critical. To our lives as Christians. You've heard enough already today to know that you must have it to survive spiritually. Without it, we will die spiritually. We must take God's word into us. Another thing the word of God does for us. If you remember when I started off, I said, I want to talk to you about the importance of God's word in our lives as Christians and what the word of God does for us. <clears throat> Another thing that the word of God does for us, it helps us to overcome sin and temptation. Do you need that today? Well, I'll tell you, it's not a day goes by that Satan will come and tempt me to sin in some way or other. And I think if you admitted the truth, you're probably in the same boat because he never quits trying to tempt us to sin. Do you know why? The temptation is not sin. It's not wrong to be tempted. Jesus was tempted, but he didn't give in to the temptation. It's not wrong to be tempted. It's wrong to give in to the temptation. When we give in to it, we've sinned, and sin destroys Praise God. And so that's why Satan never quits working. He never lets up. He's always, a, there are times when you will not feel uh, the attack or the temptation of Satan as much as you do others. And that's because God pulls him back sometimes and tells us to take our ease. And uh, so, but he's always there, always trying to get you and me to, to sin. Why? Because it, sin destroys. It will kill our spiritual man. Now listen. Please listen to this. 
First John chapter five tells us there's two types of sin in a Christian's life. Okay, two types of sin. One sin, he said, is a sin unto death. Now, he's not talking about physical death. Now, I know that if we do something terribly wrong as far as sin is concerned, it can cost us our life physically. But he's not referring to that. He is saying there's a sin unto death and a sin not unto death. There is a sin... And remember, sin is a, a sin unto death he's referring to here. <clears throat> Let me take a drink of water, folks. A sin unto death is a sin that we commit. It's a deliberate, intentional, willful sin that we know that God's word says, don't do this. And we say, I'm going to go on and do it anyway. And he gives us a list of sins in the book of Corinthians, the book of Galatians, and the book of Ephesians that will cost us greatly. And he says in Corinthians and those who, and he's writing to the church folks, not to the lost in that when he's saying this, writing to us as Christians, if you do these things, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Praise God. I wish we'd get back to the truth of God's word instead of teaching what people want to hear. Start teaching what God's word says. Praise God. Another thing that the Word of God does for us, besides feed our spiritual man, it helps us to overcome sin and the temptation to sin. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, folks. The psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 11, the psalmist said, Thank you, Kathy. The psalm said in Psalm 119, longest psalm of the Bible, longest chapter of the Bible. In Psalm 119, verse 11, the psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. And people tell you you can't help but sin. Now, I was talking about the two types of sin. I don't want to get back there. I don't want to leave that other one out. A sin unto death is a sin that we do deliberately. We know it's wrong and it's sinful and we're not supposed to do it, but we do it anyway. The sin not unto death is a sin that you can say, Lord, I failed you there. I did not mean to do that. It was not in my heart. I didn't mean to do that, but I did fail you. Now, what am I talking about? Well, what if somebody says something to you that makes you angry? And before you realize what you've done, or before thinking about it, you respond with an angry reply. That's not God's will. God doesn't want us to do that, but we do. What if somebody <coughs> cuts you off in traffic and makes you mad and you think a thought you shouldn't have thought about them? If you can say when, in, in that type of sin, Lord, I am so sorry. It just happened so quick. I didn't mean to do it. Please forgive me. The Bible says, that that's not a sin unto death. That was not intentional. You did not mean to do it. You did it before you thought. You know what I'm talking about. I'll give you an example using myself. <coughs> I have the allergy problems this time of year, folks, and it's uh, 
always uh, always ends up with a lot of junk in my throat, and I have to clear my throat a lot. Praise God, especially when I'm talking. When I, when I get off here, it'll stop after a little bit. But anyway, I was riding down the highway, going to the little church one night, one day, and a man was riding my bumper. I was on interstate, on the interstate. And I never have liked that. God lets me get to the station a lot of times without anybody being behind me, and I love it. I don't like people riding my bumper. But anyway, he was riding my bumper, and then he was speeding up and slowing down, speeding up, slowing down. And then finally he went around me, and he was moving. He was going faster than I was, and I usually go – Set my cruise. I shouldn't confess this. A lot of people say, "Well, brother, warn your center." Uh, well, um, I usually set my cruise a few miles above the speed limit. And when he went around me, I said, "I wish he'd get a ticket." And I hadn't gone three miles, four miles down the road, and here the blue lights are behind me. And he pulls me over. And I said, Officer, I wasn't doing but 10 miles over. <coughs> he said, Well, I know. <coughs> he said, I know we used to let that go by, but not anymore. And I think he was telling me a story, but I don't think he was in a good mood. And, uh, so when he gave me the ticket, I called the lady at, in, in the city. I said, now, I've got this ticket. What do I need to do? She said, well, she said, I can't believe he gave you a ticket 10 miles over because they don't do that. 10 miles or under on the interstate, they'll let you have that much. I even heard an officer say that one time in a traffic school where I took my son to go he, to it. He said, uh, he said, started off by saying, how many no's in here? How many no's in here in this class? How many miles over the, over the speed that we'll give you on a primary road? I knew the answer was 10. I didn't say anything because I wasn't part of the class. And he said, we'll give you 10 miles on a primary road like an interstate. We'll give you 10 miles over the speed limit. And it's always been the case. And that lady told me, she said, I don't know what's, uh, why he did that. Because he said, we don't, there's nothing you can do, Mr. Trader. You can't go to court. You can't go to traffic school. You've just got to pay the ticket. And I said, okay, and that's what we'll do. Thank you, Ashley. First John 5, 17. That's good. Thank you. Talking about sin of death, sin not unto death. And so sometimes I had repent of that, and I did repent of it, and I haven't done it since. Because <laughs> every time I think about the Lord, what's the Lord give them a ticket because the way they're driving. Uh, praise God, Kevin. God bless you. Are you... I, okay, I'm glad you're there. Praise God. I just thought that, uh, uh, is it, uh, well, I bet you, I would think that Brother Donnie's off. Okay. Praise God. I'm sure he had a good message. Praise the Lord. He was talking about the spiritual authority of the believer. Praise God. Okay. Now, the second thing that we need the Word of God for, it helps us to overcome, overcome sin and temptations. Now listen to this. The more of God's word we get in us, please listen to this, folks. Some of you hear this. The more of God's word, yes, he said, great message. I, I know it was. I, <coughs> that uh, is uh, uh, a great message. It's a great uh, subject. The authority of God's word, the authority of the believer. And I know it was a good message. Praise God. I, I believe it would, would have been. Well, it's going, would be. Okay. The more of God's word we get in us, the more it enables us to say no to sin. That's one reason you and I need to get it in us more. More of the word in us. Everybody has a, something that Satan uses to tempt them. 
And the Bible tells us, the psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, verse 11. The more of God's word we get in us, the more it enables us not to sin. You're going to get mad at me. Maybe you're going to say, I'll turn this off now because I really don't believe <clears throat> what he just said. We don't have to sin. I'm talking about deliberate, intentional sin. We do not have to do it. If we did, it means that the sin has control of us. But the Bible tells us sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. It cannot dominate us as Christians. It cannot. It is not something that we can't keep from doing. Most of the time when we sin deliberately, it's because we deliberately sin. We sin knowing that we were sinning, but we did it anyway. Praise God. So the Bible tells us if you want to have victory over sin and temptation, get the word of God in your heart. The word, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119 verse 11. <coughs> now, Another reason we need the Word of God is because it gives us faith. The Word of God gives us faith. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The only reason our faith is not greater than it is Praise God, Patsy. The only reason it's not greater than it is is because we don't do what God's Word says to get it. Now, I'm just being frank and blunt with you. Did you know, God bless you, Patty. I can't bring you up on camera because I tried it a few minutes ago and it just it done something to where it, what it, all I was hearing, I was hearing myself speak, but it was like a three-second delay. And it was really, I couldn't do it. I couldn't keep doing it. And so I'm sorry, but I'm glad you're watching, Patty. God bless you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The reason we need the word of God is it gives us faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise God. The reason our faith is not greater, and I've been told by people yes Jonah I've been told by people in the past from time to time I've, in the 50 years of ministry I've been <clears throat> I've had people say well brother Ward you're too blunt you're too much to the point mm. God bless you Patty how do you I hope everything's good with you and your family And I've been told, one person said to me, you're too old-fashioned. Well, at that time, that may have hurt a little bit because that was when I was younger. But right now, I can tell you that's almost a compliment to me. Because the one thing I love about Jesus, oh, I love a lot of things I love, but the one thing that really stands out that I love is his truthfulness. He was so truthful. Oh, I love it. I know that sometimes he said things that were uh, hard for them to accept, uh, especially disciples. Now, Tom, I didn't know you was watching, but God bless you. It's good to hear from you. I hope you all doing okay, and and uh, we're going to miss you at the church, I mean at the station, but I know you all get back as soon as you can. They've had, uh, I did, did, I don't know, Tom, I haven't heard about the one that was tested for the coronavirus, so maybe you can let me know if it was negative or positive, praise God. But thank you, Tom, for that comment, praise God. Precious lady, her and her husband, Robert, love, uh, love the Lord. They've been such a blessing, with, along with Glenna and, and uh, Cindy at the station. They help us answer phones at night, praise God. And they can't come now because of this situation right now. But they'll, it'll work out, Lord willing. 
she said, I love you, or to the point, well, I may not be doing it like Jesus did, and I don't mean to for it to ever. Oh, okay, Thomas, thank you so much. Thank you. I don't mean I've been told one person left the service where I preached, and thank you, Kathy. To God be all the glory. Left the service I preached at and said, I won't be back. And they told the person they was talked to that was leader of the church, they said, uh, because he likes to offend people. That's never been the case in my life. Beth, God bless you. That's what they said. And they never came back. Said he wants to offend people by things he said. I can tell you with God hearing me today, to the best of my knowledge, since I've been in the ministry, if I make it to May 2nd, a few days from now, I would have been in the ministry 51 years, and not one time have I preached a message that was ever intended to offend anybody. But sometimes when you give the truth, folks, it offends. The truth of God's word, I mean. And uh, I've never meant it for that reason. I tell the truth because I love people and I want them to know the truth. I tell the truth because I love the way he was so truthful. I am so tired of all the lies in the world. It is so easy for people to lie. I've expected out of the loss, but I'll tell you, I, it has amazed me how I, I uh, can't go through a week without a talking to Christians now. I'm not around them much anymore because this right now, but normally you can't you can't be around Christians very long. That somewhere along the line they're gonna lie to you. And they don't know that God reveals to his ministers a lot of times and to some of his Christians that's close to him that have discerning, they they don't realize that that, that person knows. Uh thank you, Beth, God bless you. They don't know that uh, God is revealing to them that they're lying. Praise God. If Christians, it amazes me that people who claim to be Christians that don't have a problem with lying. They don't have a problem with it. That bothers me. It has for a long time. Because the Bible says, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Revelation 21.8. Praise God. Well, I didn't mean to get off on that. But the third reason we need the word of God is because it gives us faith. Praise God. If you want your faith stronger, then do what the word of God says you have to do to get it. We all have to do this. If you want stronger faith, get in the word of God. Praise God. Get in the word. Spend time in the word. I don't have time. You don't have time. Folks. That's literally saying to God when he's done told us in the Bible to read his word, study his word, meditate in the word, and we're saying, God, I don't have time. That's a lie, folks. There's not one of you out there listening, and including me tonight or today, that couldn't make more time to read the word. Not one. I don't care. We waste a lot of time. How many hours do you spend on watching TV? How many hours do you spend out shopping that we don't do anymore but it used to be used to how many hours of time how much time do you spend doing things that's not helping you and necessary for you spiritually if we spend as much time reading and studying and meditating in the word of god as we do eating we'd be much stronger people well brother warren you're you're uh you're, you're getting there where you're offending people. Well, I don't, it's not meant to. It's the truth. It's just the truth, folks. For all of us, I don't exclude myself from that. I read the Word. I read the Word every day. And the Bible tells us to read it, meditate in it day and night. Remember, daytime to God for men is from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. Nighttime, 6 p.m. in the evening to 6 a.m. in the morning. Praise God. 
Yeah, Jonah's hit it right more time than ever now. And we waste it. If we had started doing reading the word more, studying it and meditating it since this started and we have to be at home like we do, how much stronger would you be already? How much stronger would you be? You'd be much stronger spiritually. But see, the enemy finds a way to distract us and cause us to fill our time, even when we're given time that we didn't have. And yet God says, maybe I give you this time or let this happen for you to have time to get closer to me, enter into a greater relationship with me, get in my word, study it, read it, meditate in it. Praise God. Another reason the word of God is important to us is that it quickens our bodies and spirit. The word quicken means it makes us alive, keeps us alive, and preserves us. That's what the meaning of the word quicken is. Yes, yes, amen. Praise God. God bless you all for your comments. The word quicken means to make us alive. Now, let's all read scripture to you. Psalm 119, verse 50. Yes, yes, th that's the answer, Beth. Second Chronicles 7, 14, it's the answer to our problems. But we can't get Christians to do it. You know when I we, we quote that scripture? When I quote that scripture and say that when I'm in, uh, giving a message, uh, you know what? I, I think most people think, well, that doesn't apply to me. I go to church, and and uh, I... Uh, don't really do anything bad. and But to each a world of sin in our lives as Christians, we could get rid of. How many of you have bad feelings or hatred towards somebody? How many of you are angry with somebody and have been for a long time? How many of you have a problem with pride? And, and that's why he says we need to humble ourselves in that scripture. America has a great problem with pride. Well, I didn't mean to get off on that, but, but you're right, Beth. St. Chronicles 7, 14. Listen to this, Psalm 119, verse 50. Listen to it. This is my comfort in my affliction, the psalmist says. This is my comfort in my affliction. For thy word hath quickened me. People say, what does that mean? It means make alive, keep us alive, and preserve us. It means having, it gives us a vibrancy and life. It gives us a vibrancy in life to us. It gives vibrancy in life to us. We're excited about Jesus. This is what the Word of God will do for you. It'll keep you excited about Jesus and being God's child. It makes our light shine more for Jesus. And people see it and people can see Jesus in our eyes and in our lives. Psalm 119, this is my comfort in my affliction for the word, thy word hath quickened me. You're exactly right. We're not honest, Beth. You can't get people to be honest. We, you just can't. In other words, we can't. What, I, what we'd all do is stop. Don't look at others. Don't point your finger at others. Look at our lives honestly, like she's saying. Look at our lives. Be willing to admit the truth about ourselves. If you do that, God will show you things. You can repent. And now you're moving, starting, you'll be able to move into a closer place with God than you've had in a long time or maybe ever had. Praise God. The word of God quickens us. It keeps us alive it preserves us it gives us it gives us a vibrancy and a life that people need to see you ever been excited about jesus are you as excited now as you used to be that 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 uh quickened there means that people will be able to see 
our light, our light will shine more for Jesus. And people will see it on us. You ever had anybody say there's something different about you? God bless you, Carl. I ain't got time to look it up, but God bless you. In my life as a minister, which would be 51 years, May 2nd, if the Lord wills, my spiritual birthday, um, I've met two people, two people in 51 years, almost 51 years, that had the eyes of Jesus. And I knew it as soon as I seen them. I met two people. I met one literally, and I was about 10 feet away from the other one, never 10, about maybe 20 feet away from them, never got a chance to talk to them because there's so many people around them. But there was a minister held a revival one time at Evangel Tabernacle in Lowell, and at the end of the meeting, at the end of the services, he would go back to his table out in the foyer, and, and, and I went to talk to him, and when I, as soon as I looked at him, I seen the eyes of Jesus. It was look, it look, I could tell those eyes were just, I said, that's what Jesus' eyes looked like came to me. That's what Jesus' eyes looked like. The second person was Billy Graham. I know people talk about him and there's a group out there that's trying to say he was false and all that stuff. They don't know what they're talking about and they shouldn't be attacking God's man. They still, still going to pay for it. We reap what we sow. Majority of people in the world believe and know that he was a man of God. And I do. I love it. I loved him. And I love his ministry still. I love his son, Franklin. But when I was in a meeting down in Montreat, North Carolina, where Billy Graham lived, lived we had a week long, they, was, they were going to have a week long meeting down there. The ministers from all over the world. This is back in the 70s. And so me and another brother of the Lord went down there and stayed through the meeting uh, to go to the meeting and stayed on the grounds there. And the first night that we had a meeting there, Billy Graham came to the meeting. Now, this wasn't something his organization was putting on. They just letting us use the let people use the grounds. And so, but he came to the meeting the first night and stayed through the whole meeting. And at the end of it, everybody, not everybody probably, but the majority of people in the crowd, a big crowd of ministers from all over the world, went to the stage to try to get to shake his hand and talk to him. Well, it was a, it was a big crowd and there was a lot of people, but I stayed in the crowd to get down to talk to him for, for a little while. And I, I, I got about 20 or t maybe 25 feet from him. And he was talking to someone and all of a sudden he turned around and looked at me. And for 10 to 15 seconds, all he did was stand there and look at me. We had eye to eye contact. God bless me that that night would let me see him like that. But when as soon as he looked at me, I said, oh, my, he knows everything about me. He's looking down in the depths of my heart. I never seen a person with more of the eyes of Jesus than Billy Graham. I said, he knows. That's what I felt like. He didn't, of course, but I said, he knows everything about that's the eyes of Jesus. I believe when Jesus was here and people seen him, they knew. They knew there's something different about this man. He's he's looking down in the depths of my heart. Praise God. So another reason we need the word of God is because he quickens our bodies and our spirits. Praise God. And Another reason we need the word of God, and I'm about done, folks. Another reason we need the word of God is it sanctifies us. In John 17, 17, chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus said, 
sanctify them. He's praying to the Father. John 17 is a, is a prayer that Jesus is praying for his disciples and all believers that would come after them. So it was a prayer he prayed for you and me. You ought to read it. People don't know, don't think a lot of times that the 14th, 15th, 16th chapter of John is things that Jesus told his disciples and ministered to them about after the Lord's Supper, before going to the Garden of Gethsemane. He had these things to tell them. And so those things he wants us to know. Then the 17th chapter is where he prayed to the Father for them and for other believers that would come along. And he said in John 17, 17, talking to about his disciples, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, he says. So the word of God sanctifies us. Sanctified means set apart, means to set apart. Listen to this. The more of the word of God we get in us, the more it will set us apart from the world. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The more of the word of God we get in us, the more it will set us apart from the world. The more of the scriptures we get in us, the more distance the sinful world, more, more distant the sinful world becomes to us. problem with so many Christians after they get saved is they stay around that area where they, they don't grow. There's in ankle deep water and the world's not it's, it's so close to them behind them, but they can, they can are so close to it. They are tempted by it. But if you get in the word of God, you read it, meditate in it and study it. The more you do that, the more that you will become distant, the more distant the world will become to you and to me. Praise God. Another word of God, it, it gives us hope. I know some of you uh, need to go probably. I mean, you're saying, when's he ever going to quit? Praise God. I told us he was going to quit earlier. I'm just about done. Another reason we need the word of God, it gives us hope. Psalm 119 verse 114 says, Psalm 119 verse 114 says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Praise God. God's word gives you hope. And people can't live without hope. You don't know how much you need it, maybe, but you and I need hope. Hope that God's going to do things in our lives. We need to have hope that the things are going to get better. We need to have hope that things are going to be good in the future. Thou art my hiding place, the psalmist said, and my shield, I hope in thy word. Psalm 130, verse 5 says, Psalm 130, verse 5, I wait for the Lord, my soul, soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. Praise God. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. Another reason, I'm going through this quickly now. Another reason, the Word of God, we need the Word of God. It gives us strength. Psalm 119, verse 28 says, Psalm 119, verse 28, My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. His soul was melting inside of him. Something was really wrong. And he says, strengthen thou me. Strengthen thou me. God bless you, Kevin. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, Isaiah 41.10, one of my favorite verses. I read this verse every day when I get up and every night when I go to bed. Before I go to bed. I read Isaiah chapter 41. The last part of verse 9, all the way through verse 13, every morning when I get up and every night before I go to bed. And this verse 10 is tremendous. Fear thou not, 
for I am with thee. Well, glory to God. Anybody want to shout with me? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, discouraged, and feeling like there's no hope. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Hallelujah. Man, I love this verse. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. These things I've talked about are just a few reasons why God's word is important to us. God bless you, Brother Donnie. I heard your message was good. Somebody done told me it was good. Praise God. God bless you. The things I've talked about are just a few reasons why God's word is important to us. But the main reason it is, is because without it, we can't survive spiritually. We can't survive spiritually. It is our spiritual food for our spiritual man. And now I said before I went off today, I wanted to pray for all that wants this. And I want it. I want you to agree with me that I'll get it. That you'll that God will give you a greater desire for the word than you've ever had. There was a time when I was working a secular job in the 80s. I worked at Naval Ordnance in Louisville. And uh, I'd got to a place that the word of God was so important to me that I couldn't wait to get home to read the word. I want that back again. I want that. I want to love, love the word of God to the place that I just can't get enough of it. And I want that for you. And if you want that and you're sincere, don't pray this if you're not. It won't do no good. If you're sincere and you really want to have a greater desire for the word than ever and you're willing to, to, to do something with that desire once he gives it to you, you're willing you're willing. Oh, Beth, God bless you. She's sitting clap offering. <laughs> Praise God. Jonah said, I want that. Oh, but God bless you, Jonah. Praise God. Beth says, I want it back as well. You see, we're moving into the end times. We're already approaching it very quickly to things that's going to change greatly in the world one of these days, not too far off. And we need the word of God. And so the way we if, we, if we've got a great desire for it, we'll get in the Word. We'll begin to read it and meditate in it and study it like we should. It's going to be critical. I believe there's going to be a world of people. Joe said, him and Peggy won't tell. I believe there's a world of people, Kathy too, that are Christians but are very weak in the Word. And with things, Carl wants it, and with things get rough it's going to be hard for them to go through because they have not we have not and that's for all of us we have not done what we needed to prepare ourselves we've not gotten strong spiritually i've wondered many times if god showed us our spiritual man what would it look like would it be strong and robust or would it be skin and bones most people just get enough to get by. Some don't even do that. That's not, that's not going to help us in the future, folks, because the things that's coming our way, coming the ways of Christians in the world and the way of uh, 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 the time it's going to get rough before the Antichrist comes, before the tribulation starts. Jesus spoke of that in, in three different Gospels. And we need to be prepared. Father, I pray and agree right now with every person that will agree with me. I agree right now, Father. I agree, Father. I agree in one prayer rising up to you. Will you give each one of us that's praying this prayer and meaning it from our hearts, will you give each one of us starting today a greater desire for the word, your word, than we've ever had. Your word, 
a desire for it so great that we just, Lord, we can't wait to get in it. We can't wait to study it. We can't wait to read it and meditate and think about what you're saying to us. Would you do that for me? Would you do that for others that are listening today that's agreeing with me? I agree with them. And I say, would you do it for them? Would you do it for them? Would you do it for them? If they mean it, would you do it for each one of us? Would you do that? I want it, Lord. Many of them want it. Would you do that for us, Lord? name in jesus name in jesus name amen praise god praise god praise god praise god praise god thank you lord thank you lord now i want to pray for jimmy smallwood somebody done said uh, uh, they wanted us to pray i want to pray for him i want to pray for that lost horse anybody else got a prayer request praise god praise god Anybody else got a prayer request that they want to uh, give us? God bless you, Kevin. Thank you for staying with me, buddy. Praise God. Praise God. After the message here, Brother Don's message, he come over here. Okay, let me get this down real quick for us. A horse lost. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Smallwood. And we're glad Jimmy's doing better to be out of the hospital anyway. Praise God. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? He had some heart problems, Jonah. I had surgery. And, and then here's a lady named Jacina. I said Jan Cinta. Jan Cinta. Uh, says, pray for her. Okay. Anybody else? Wait a minute now, Jonah. Salvation for family. Okay. Okay, anybody else have a prayer request before we before you get off here? Praise God. Praise God. All right, nobody else? Okay, we'll go ahead and pray over these. Lord, first of all, we come to you thanking you, thanking you for Jimmy coming through, for pulling Jimmy through what he went through. Lord, I believe that you're the one that's kept him here. And, and that's what we want. We want to see you continue to do that, Lord. Would you have kept him to fully recover from this heart surgery, Lord? Totally recover from it. And as best as possible, get back to normal the best he can. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for uh, helping Sue through that, because I know she's been greatly worried about him and concerned about him. I mean, thank you for doing that. Lord, we pray about this horse. Now, you let him find a dog. You can let him find the horse. Would you let him find the horse, Father? Would you lead him to the horse, dear God, and let him find this lost horse, God? Would you lead him to that horse, Father? Lead him right to it in Jesus' name, just like you did the dog, praise God. And here's one from Jacinta. She said, pray for me, Lord. I don't know what her needs are, but we all agree together for her right now. Just ask whatever they are, would you do it for would you do make this would you meet her need today would you start working today start answering prayer today for in jesus name amen amen jonah wants one for uh kirsten unspoken and christy christy wants one and uh all right and, Lord, we do pray for both those unspoken requests. We don't know what they are, but it doesn't matter. You know all about them. And we pray, God, that you'd meet those needs according to your will in Jesus' name. We pray for Shelby and Nathan, Kathy's request, that you will move mightily. You're about to move mightily. You're about to do something good. You're going to do something good in their lives. You're going to change their lives. You're going to do a mighty work, make them whole spiritually. We pray you'll do that, keep them safe. Watch over them, meet their needs, and save them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, God bless all you folks, and thank you for being here this morning. And uh, uh, if the Lord wills, I'll be back with you next Sunday morning uh, at, uh, at 11 o'clock, if I, if Lord willing. Praise God. I'm thinking now. Uh, I don't know. I'm normally on the first of the month, first Sunday of the month, which I think will be next. Praise God. Valerie, God bless you. I don't know how much you've been able to see, 
Uh, I can't bring you up on camera because I tried it, and when I did, uh, okay, Jonah, good. Lord, we pray for Jonah's family that you'd save them. Don't let them die lost. Move mightily in the hearts of each and every one of them, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Valerie, God bless you. God bless you, Ashley. Praise God. Valerie, God bless you. I couldn't bring you up on camera because it's something when I did it, it was making a, a feedback and I couldn't do it. I tried it earlier. Praise God. Glad you're watching, old Valerie. And uh, I'm not sure about next Sunday morning, folks, because uh, if Donnie asks me to do it, I don't know if he will, if he's planning on it. But if he does, he normally asks me to do it on first Sunday of the month. And uh, if if I don't do it, I'll be here. God bless you, Jeff. So, if, but if not, if I'm not here next Sunday, it's because I'll be bringing a message at the station. Uh, yeah, good. Hope you do. Morning to all. Of, morning, Valerie. Thank you for the message. Praise God, message. Thank you. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Miss you all at our little church. Jonah says. Now I want to tell you, if the Lord wills. I'll be back with you Thursday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time right here uh, where I'm coming from my home. Thursday night at 7 o'clock right here from my home, okay? And then if the Lord wills, I don't know about Sunday morning, but if, if the Lord wills, if the Lord wills, you can have you, if you, if I'm not here Sunday morning, you can listen to the message on WJCR at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Praise God. And you, if you, if you got, if you need want to get, go to WJ, uh, go to the simple, if you have a smartphone, bring up the simple app, a simple radio. It says simple, S I M P L E, simple radio. Bring up that app and then you can hear WJCR good and clear on that usually. Praise God. So I'd love to have you tune in at 11 o'clock Eastern time. But I want to tell you this, if the Lord wills, next Sunday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Central Time, I will be starting a study on the book of Revelation. This is at the request of several people who've asked me. That's why I'm doing it. So I just have to believe God's in it. The Lord willing is, but it's not, I won't, I won't last long. But if he's in it, uh, and I believe he is, uh, I'll be starting a study on the book of Revelation uh, next Sunday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. 7 o'clock Eastern time. Joan has been wanting that for two years. She's been at the little church with us, and she has said, when are we going to have a revelation? We're going to, so I'm going to, Jonah, if nobody else tunes in, I hope you do. I hope you do. We did it once at this little church, and it lasted a year. It may last that long this time. Praise God. Joni, God bless you. Are you the one who used to come to church there? Praise God. Uh, praise God. Somebody, Jonah says, somebody help me remember. Praise God. Somebody told me you can put a thing in your phone that, that alerts you. Praise God. But that's next Sunday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time, Lord willing. Praise God. Now, there she goes. She'll remind her. Okay. But, folks, God bless you. And uh, I don't have time today, but maybe Thursday night. My son said you all have a QA. and I said, well, we can do that, but I. I just don't know that I can have all the answers. Or, well, I'm sure I can't have all the answers. I don't, but anyway, praise God. Okay. Okay. That's the one that used to come to church. Praise God. I've been praying for her and her family since they, uh, since she started coming. And Lydia. Uh, I prayed for her and her family. Praise God. Well, God bless you all. And folks, if the Lord wills, I'll be back with you Thursday night at 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time. And thank you, Kathy. God bless you. And if the Lord wills, I'll see you then. And until then, may God bless and keep you.